As for man, however, we're stuck with the original model. All we can do is add an outer layer of things he does not naturally have. Space medicine showed us where man is vulnerable, and we learned to compensate for most of the weaknesses with technology and careful workmanship. I uh, made boxing gloves before I came here, and the fact is I was an experienced sewer, but I had to learn all over again because uh, it was completely different from what I had sewed before. This was getting right down to a 64th of an inch, and where I had sewed before, you just sewed on a production line. And this here is uh, quality more than quantity. Like, we always think our job is the hardest. Whatever we're doing, we got the hardest job. But when they say, well, go over there and maybe do so-and-so, well, you'll find out that job is harder than yours. And then a lot of times we're sewing or making things, and maybe the girl next to you, she's doing the same thing, but we never see the suit put together. One don't know where the, this part goes, or the other one don't know where the other part goes. Like the gloves. If they would give you a glove to sew, you wouldn't know where to start. Well, when they're up there in space, you know what parts you've worked on, and you just say, well, I hope that part don't fail because I'd feel it was my fault if it did. My sentiment is what Hazel said. Well, I was just wondering if my pair of gloves was what he had on. Uh, if you make a mistake, that, if you don't admit it, you have to think about the astronaut, too. If you make a, uh, like a needle hole in the bladder or something like that, well, if you don't admit that, that would be on your conscience all the time, seems to me. Because I remember Armstrong and all them used to come in, and uh, they would look around and see what we were doing. And once in a while they'd talk to us and sign their all, uh, we'd get them to sign their autograph. Some of them were real comical. <laughs> we got a kick out of them. We all want to talk to them, I guess. <laughs> I mean, when I'm going down the aisle, everybody looked at them, looked at them, prayed to talk. I said, hi, oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, I'd love to go into space. I think it would be really thrilling just to get in there and just blast off. <laughs> I'd love to go to space and just live there. And every day you get up, you come to work, you go home, you clean house. If we go out there, there's no house, no kids, no problems. <laughs> I like to ride an airplane, and I think I'd like to go into space. And I'd like to wear our own suit that we make. I think I could depend on it. After body electrodes have been attached to monitor heartbeat and breathing, the first items of clothing are the water-cool underwear and a urine collector. A spacesuit is basically a sealed bag of atmosphere, a stiffened balloon, pumped up to counteract the vacuum of space. It might be called a one-man spaceship of the smallest possible dimensions. The pressure suit has to guard against extreme temperatures, hard radiation from the sun, and tiny meteorites. Yet, it must have the flexibility to allow a man to function as he would in his natural Earth environment.
The backpack cleans and cools the suit's oxygen, cools and circulates water through the water-cooled underwear, and provides radio communication. Over the pressure helmet is a clear visor, then a gold-coated visor to protect against micrometeors and solar radiation. The final test was...